Hello? All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I know that the fact that we made the meeting mandatory didn't get you here. So I want to thank Sandra for being here and passing out regalia, because it's a way to ensure that all third year students are in the building. But first, before we start, congratulations. Um, It's, you know, the three years goes really fast. I know you guys have a lot to accomplish over this next month, exams and racking, wrapping up clinics and externships, but really congratulations on everything that you've accomplished so far. So today's session is to really designed to go over a lot of nuts and bolts and really details that you need both for commencement day as well as wrapping up things with the law school. So I'm gonna turn it over to um, Logan Pierce first. We're gonna go here from a variety of different departments um, with just, inf just different information. The session is being taped for um, remote students, SIP students and other people who couldn't be here. Um, so just so you know that, Logan. I need to clap. Don't worry about it. Y'all don't have to clap. <laughs> uh, now I'm just here to uh, to remind everybody to vote online for the professor, adjunct professor, and staff member of the year. Um, we hand out those awards at Glen Manor. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate all of y'all. I'll be right there along with you. So um, that's really all I have to say. If you didn't get the email, let us know, and uh, Jill can send you another one. So good job. Glad to see all of you here. Um, and the next person is from financial aid, Catherine. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I just have a couple, uh, three quick things to share with you. Uh, first is about mandatory exit counseling, loan exit counseling. Um, so anyone who's borrowed a federal loan during their three years here has to, uh, by federal law, um, go through an exit counseling session. So you'll be getting um, e an email from us with the session date, so we're gonna have um, a few group sessions available as well as um, some one-on-one -on -one sessions that you can have if, if, if that's how you'd prefer, and we'll have those. Um, you can sign up in our office for those or shoot us an email and uh, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, the next thing is um, the PillRap program. So if any of you are gonna be doing public interest law um, and would be interested in loan forgiveness, we have our in-house loan forgiveness program. Um, you would be eligible to do that next year as an alum and uh, we'll have information. We email all alums and there's information on the website. So that's pretty much it. Um, Next is Doug. Hello. Uh, be very brief. I do have some things, but mostly it will be just to alleviate future headaches from you. Um, balances, just make sure you take care of those by May 1. Most of you probably have them taken care of already, but just if you didn't know, parking citations do go on the student account, so just make sure if you have any of those to take care of those so there's no future headaches there. And you could do that through TMS or a payment through our office. Um, degree requirements, uh, just check your program eval on your portal, uh, making sure mainly the pro bono writing requirement or um, any incompletes are taken care of in a timely manner. Uh, about April 19th for the pro bono is in the announcements today. Um, writing requirement and incompletes by April 25th. Again, just to be safe and not, you don't have to worry about anything uh, when it's, you know, a week from graduation. Um, Bar certifications, uh, we're here to help you in the Records and Finance Office. Uh, you should probably know the requirements you need to do for your bar by now, but um, if you have any questions, you can come by our office and we can try to help you. Um, you may need to have paperwork filled out by us. Make sure you bring that by us in a timely manner too. Um, any amendments, um, some states require you know, a copy of your application, uh, so just make sure you review your application and if there's anything that needs to be amended, um, again, all about alleviating your headaches later, uh, take care of that. Any address changes, uh, you know, do that with us if you're gonna be in a different address after graduation. Um, and locker keys, I know that you've been given, some of you have been given your locker keys right now. Uh, we ask that they are returned by May 10th. Um, and if, there is, if you have any lost locker keys, there, there will be a $25 charge. So hopefully if there's any um, lost locker keys, we can try to find them by that time. <laughs> um, 
And just in case if this, this might be mentioned later, but Diana, uh, Dean Hassel is in this back room here. Um, if you have any phonetic uh, sayings of your name, if you want us to make sure we, you know, obviously say it correctly at graduation, just please stop back with her after this is over. Um, and that is all I have. So Kathy Thompson? Nope. Or John Ralston? <laughs> I'll be Kathy today. Uh, so um, just to echo something, well first congratulations on your impending graduation, uh, and then to echo something Doug just said, so Regardless of where you're taking the bar exam, every state requires you to have the law school certify that you're graduating, so you need to meet with the folks over in student finance and records to let them know where you're taking the bar exam so that they know exactly where they should send that paperwork, okay? Um, in terms of the deadline to the bar applications, uh, some are quickly approaching, most are, right? Uh, New York is April 30th, uh, Rhode Island and Connecticut May 1st, and Massachusetts is May 12th. So if you have any questions about the applications, uh, please feel free to come talk to me. Uh, I'm happy to, to answer those for you, or you can send me an email. Uh, over the summer, I'm going to have some supplementary bar exam materials available for you to complement what you're getting in your Barbary or your Kaplan or Themis or whatever course you're taking. We're also going to have some workshops over the summer. Um, in the past, what I've done is I've had uh, mini exams where you've had uh, students have had the ability to take practice multiple choice exams and essay exams um, after they've had the opportunity to study the subject matter in their in their bar review class. So I'll send out updates about that. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Yeah. All right. So uh, send out some material about that uh, soon. Um, if you have any questions though about taking the bar exam, if we haven't met throughout the course of the year to talk about kind of your plans, if you have any questions about that, again, I'm happy to meet with you in the next couple weeks here. So thanks. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, we're very excited. I know that when you got your survey today, you saw the employer and location, if applicable, and some of you wretched at seeing that. Uh, and that's OK. I'm just here to tell you not to panic. Uh, but it is very important to stay in touch with my office after you graduate. That's why we really want to know what your email address is after graduation. You do have your Roger Williams email address for life. But if there's another one that you're going to be checking more often, please let us know what that is. We create listservs based off of these surveys. So if you're going to be in New York, I will send you opportunities in New York or events that are going on in New York. If you're here in Rhode Island or Massachusetts, I will send you opportunities that come up in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. I will not post them in simplicity. I will only send them to you. So that gives you a great advantage to get those jobs as they become available. Uh, you'll also be receiving correspondence from our office um, as graduation approaches, after graduation, after you take the bar, because your resume is going to have to change each and every time with respect to your bar status. So if you haven't put a bar status on there yet, once you complete your bar applications, put on there bar status will sit for July 2017 Massachusetts bar exam or New York bar exam or Colorado bar exam. Uh, then after you take the bar exam, you will say sat for 2017 uh, June, July 2017 Colorado bar exam results pending. And then after you get your results, then you will say uh, past exam, admission pending, and then once you're sworn in, you will finally be able to say that you are admitted to practice. So just keep that in mind. That's something you're going to have to do throughout your job search. So we'll be sending out periodic reminders about that. Um, your LinkedIn profile, if you do not have one, I strongly encourage you to create one right now. Make sure you do keep that accurate and reflective of your current bar status as well. Employers are using that site very, very frequently now uh, in the legal market. So I want to make sure that you are as competitive as other students out there with LinkedIn profiles. And then... Uh, there are a lot of events that will happen, whether here in Rhode Island or New York, D.C. So if you are in those areas, I do encourage you to attend after you graduate so that you can meet other alumni that are out there and other students that are looking to move to where you are, and you'll ultimately become part of that pool. So, uh, so good luck with the next few weeks. Please stay in touch. When, you're, when you leave, just turn the survey into the basket there, and, um, and we'll be in touch soon. See you all at Glen Manor. Thank you. Okay, enough with the depressing stuff. Now we're going to talk about the fun day, the day that you've waited for for three years. So my name is Margie Carancy. I am with the clinical program, so I see a lot of my faces here that I know and love. Um, and I just wanted to walk you through what's going to happen on graduation day. So you have to be in your regalia in the field house when we, will, we will help you put your regalia on, but you have to be dressed by 11.15 because it's a very tight schedule. My recommendation is that you arrive by no later than 10.30. Um, you're going to go into the field house. Everybody, I assume, knows where that is, right? Is anybody that doesn't know where the field house is? Right. Okay. Everybody knows? 
Okay, so it's the recreation center. So you go out the front door and down the hill, that's the field house. <clears throat> and then what's going to happen is um, we're going to go through a lot of stuff once we get into the field house. The first thing I'm going to have everybody do is to make sure that you don't bring a lot of stuff into the field house with you because um, there's no way to carry it when you start to process into the tent. So I would recommend that you only take bare minimum of, don't take a whole bunch of coats and other stuff with you. I would not recommend that you take handbags with you, especially the guys, don't take a handbag. Anyway, um, I would recommend you don't take a lot of stuff with you because you, there's just no way to put it. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna come into the field house, we will have some drinks and snacks for you. Hopefully it will be a beautiful day, it won't be too hot or too cold. And um, you're going to take a while to sort of get in there and figure out what you're doing. We, we will have a whole bunch of staff there to help you get into your regalia. So you don't have to worry about any of that. We'll, we have bobby pins, we have hair pins, um, and we, we'll have everything that you need to make sure that your regalia is right. What I would ask everybody to do though is make sure, I know everyone was picking it up today, make sure you try it on. Every single year, I have somebody who never bothered to try their regalia on, and it either looks like somebody sat on it for three months without ironing it, and don't iron it, have it uh, professionally pressed. But um, they either come in and they look like it's been in a closet for three years, or they've never tried it on, and now they're saying, my hat's too big, my hat's too small, uh, my gown is too long, my gown is too short. The reason you get them now is so that you can try them on and make sure that they fit. So that's really, really important. Okay, so on commencement day, um, you'll have a lot of people to assist you to get dressed. And then by 11.45, we're going to put you all, we're going to line you all up on the bleachers and take a class picture. If you are not there by 11.45, you will not be in the class picture. Um, and then I have to, after that, give you some more instruction, get you all lined up, which is a, a real big task because people keep moving. Um, so I need to line you all up and then get you ready to process. We're actually going to start to get ready to go out by 1230 because we have to start to process at 10 of. And it takes a while to get everybody organized and who has to go to the bathroom and who needs one more break and whatever. So. Um, so it all happens pretty fast. Please don't be late. Please count on traffic. So now let's talk about what the day's like. Um, I have been here for 22 years, and I have been in freezing cold where it's torrential downpours and sleet, and I have been here when it's 100 degrees and you feel like you're baking in your regalia. So what you really have to do is you have to plan for the weather. Don't wear guys and girls are like, don't wear stilettos to graduation because you're going to end up sinking into the grass because we graduate in the grass on the field and spring being what it is, a lot of times there's rain and so the grass can be very damp. Sometimes it's been just all mud. So you have to plan accordingly. I would not recommend High heels, I would recommend, for, at least for the women, I would recommend um, wedgies or flats or... The guys can do that too if they want, but in any case, um, I really need you to pay attention to the weather. The regalia is very warm, so if it's a warm day, yes, you do have to wear something under it. I know a couple of my students said they weren't, but I don't want to know that stuff, okay? Um, but you, you need to keep in mind, you don't want to have, if it's a very warm day, the regalia is heavy. So you want to make sure that you plan ahead of time and that your, your dress for that day is appropriate based on the weather. Um, I also recommend that you not take anybody into the field house with you. It gets pretty chaotic when we're trying to get everybody organized and ready. Um, if a family member wants to take a picture while you're getting dressed, that's fine, but then I basically will try to just have you in that room because it's a lot of work to get everybody ready. Um, so keep in mind about the weather. Keep in mind that that's going to determine what you wear. Um, every single year, there's at least one or two people that not only come in late, but that come in with 
I don't know, flip-flop sound or uh, something inappropriate. And when you start to see how they set up the tent, you're going to see that the stage is really high up, like 11 feet up. And so what happens is, I don't want to see like hairy legs with shorts on underneath them with your regalia walking across the stage with flip-flops leaving one on the top of the stage as you walk off. So, or even worse, that you fall up or down the stage because you have inappropriate <laughs> footwear on. So 22 years gives me a lot of experience, so I can tell you don't do it. I guarantee one of you will do it. If nothing else, just to aggravate me, no. <laughs> but in any case, it's supposed to be a really, really fun day for you. We will really try to make it as relaxing and as comfortable as possible. And that starting that week with Glen Mana, it's your week to finally sort of kick back, relax, enjoy the fruits of three years of hell, which is what I call it. And and really start to, it starts to sink in that, oh my God, I made it through this. So you have to also keep that in mind. I hope everybody's going to Glen Manor. I have to tell you, I said it to all my clinic students all the time, it's my favorite, favorite event ever. It's where you get to spend quality time with all of your classmates that work so hard with you and really just enjoy the night. Everybody gets dressed up, everybody has a great time. It's a great event, so I hope that all of you, if you're not planning on joining us, will change your mind, because we would love to see you there. Um, other than that, there's a two-page, mine isn't green, but there's a two-page handout that everyone got. Please read this very carefully. When you come into the parking area, you're going to go to the north lot near the baseball field. You, there will be security there to, to help you find a parking spot. If you have relatives that are coming that uh, need a disability spot, you should see Chelsea or and make sure that you get the proper paperwork so that they will have a spot to park in. And we do have people that help them into the tent if they need that. So it's really important that you read all this to make sure that you know what's going on. And if you do have any questions, you can always call Chelsea's office. Um, are there any questions with respect to how the day's going to go? Anybody have anything that they really didn't know that they feel like they need to know. I mean, we'll be there all morning. Uh, the clinical staff works it, and all of the staff at the law school also works in the, in the field house that day. So there'll be a lot of us around to help you. Um, everybody, I know everybody's going to take their phones. That's fine. You can certainly have those in the field house. But there's nobody to watch any personal belongings while we're in the, in the tent. So... I would not recommend that you take anything with you. The other thing I just want to tell you about is you do not walk alphabetically. Everyone is going to get a card with their name on it. It's the same name that you gave to, um, to Doug Peterson's office when you said what you wanted your diploma to say. You did hear John Ralston mention that um, if you have kind of a funky name that you want, Dean Hassel, to, you want to make sure she says it right. She's going to be here after, and she will do a phonetic spelling on the back of your card for you so that she makes sure that she gets it right. And um, all of that will be done ahead of time, okay? But you really do have to make sure that you're prepared that day, that everything's in order, and that you're ready to go. And then now after the, after the um, commencement, I recommend that everybody take as many pictures as you want with your regalia you're on, with your family and friends. And then when all that is over, then you go back into the field house, return your regalia, and you'll, your diploma will be there waiting for you. Okay? So you don't get your diploma on that day, I mean, on, when you graduate, because it's too hard because you're not alphabetical to try to figure out the diploma stuff. So you just get a big empty one. But it looks good in pictures as long as you don't open it and there's a blank thing in there, right? So it's after that you'll get your big diploma, which you so, so deserve. Um, but I think that's it as far as that. You'll line up however you want. We want you to be with your friends that you became close to during graduation. We don't think alphabetically is the best way to do that. So you line up however you want. We'll be in there to make sure you have a seat. We'll walk you in. I'll be in back of you pushing your butts in to make sure everybody has a seat behind them. And before you know it, it'll be here. Any questions? I do modules 
Yes. Yeah. Right. So the way that we process is there's two, there's a double row for each row, for the first row, the second row, the third row. I think we'll probably have four rows. But so if you line up, and I will have um, cards on the floor so everybody will have a card that they're going to stand on. So every card has a seat that goes with it. So what happens is if you are on the left hand side or the right hand side, of a person that you expect to process with, you're not going to end up next to them. You're going to end up on opposite sides. So what happens is it's a double line. The people on the left-hand side of the line go on the left-hand side of the tent. The people on the right-hand side of the line go on the right-hand side of the tent, which means that anybody that you want to sit with should be in front of or in back of you in the line, OK? Very, very important. And you have to plan that ahead of time because there's only, there's only so many seats in each row and for fire code reasons, they're all um, zip lined together. So you can't even move them. You, so it's, it is what it is. It's not, you know, I mean, that's how they do it. So you ha really do, you, if there's a card there, there'll be a seat for you. So as long as you're standing on a card, then there'll be a seat for you in the field house. Anything else? Did I miss anything? Anything else? Yes, Matthew. Oh, it's not long. It's, um, <laughs> you see how happy I am? It's about, they usually run about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 25 minutes, depending on if the speakers stay true to what they, their timing. Um, every now and then we'll get like a rogue speaker, but for the most part, that's not the case. And it, it goes by very quickly. I, no, no speech is long, and um, usually no speech is boring. So. Anything else? Oh, Ken? Yeah, I mean, the tent is open early in the morning and it's open seating, so whoever gets there first gets the best seats. Oh, oh sorry, I'm wrong. <laughs> 22 years and I still don't know, apparently. And there is plenty of seating because they set it up for the undergrad too for the next day. So there's always no fear that they'll get that your family will get a seat. And there's big um, TV screens so that even if somebody is in front of you that you can't see, you're going to be able to see everything that happens on the stage from those screens. So there's no bad seat in the house in that. Okay. Anything else? Excellent. Congratulations, guys. Hi everyone, I'm Megan Hansen, Director of Alumni Relations, and I just want to say congratulations, and also it's great to see all of you here. I've worked with many of you over the past few years, and now it's the exciting part where you get to celebrate with your classmates and your families, and I really love commencement. So I'm here today really to offer greetings from the Law Alumni Association. The current president is Jillian, J Jillian Jagling, who's class of 09. And there is a board of directors. And so once you're a year removed from school, um, you should consider running for a seat. They're three-year terms. And it's a great group that gets together remotely and in Rhode Island. So you could, um, if you're not in Rhode Island, you can call in and be a director. And so they're really set out to further the school's goals. So we help with admissions, we help with career development, and we also volunteer in different um, capacities. We have some subcommittees. You may be interested in planning events, or we have a scholarship golf committee. And so there are a lot of ways to be involved if you would like to be, and you don't have to be a director to be on those committees. And so it's something to just keep in mind as you leave here today. Also, the alumni office sends out periodic updates and emails with news, with evites, with different information. And so it's important to keep your address up to date. So if you have a new address, you have a new job, or anything has changed, you know, always try to keep us in mind. There's a law alumni at RWU account that you can always email. 
or you can certainly reach out to myself or anyone here at the law school. We have a few events coming up that you may be interested in. This one's early, but I want to mention it. So June 15th is our annual breakfast. It's at 7.45 in the morning, which I know is early, but it's held in conjunction with the Rhode Island Bar Association meeting. And we hold it then because a lot of our attorneys then go to the meeting. And it's our annual meeting. So that's when the new slate of directors is sworn in. And also we invite attorneys and judges. And so it's a really great event. That's also a great networking opportunity. So if you do find yourself able to attend that morning, I recommend it. It's at the Rhode Island Convention Center. And then also something we started last year that we're continuing this year, um, Massachusetts has a good number of you sitting for the bar. So after the last day, we have a post bar reception right across um, from the facility. And so I hope that you'll come over and join us. We have alumni, Dean Elnoski, and other folks that join us. And so it's just sort of a celebration to say, you know, now you can kind of kick back and relax. We promise we won't talk about the bar exam. You can just come by and, you know, take a breather. And also something coming up that we do traditionally every year is Law Alumni Weekend and the golf tournament I had mentioned. And so in August, September, we try to hold those two activities. Sometimes they're together. This year they may actually be separated out just due to some of the dates. So just keep an eye out for those dates because you're welcome to <coughs> join us, come back. I know a lot of times folks feel like, well, I just left a few months ago. I'm not really you know, an alum, but that's not true. So as soon as you leave, um, you're automatically in the Alumni Association and it's open to all of our alums, it's free. And really what it gives you is just these updates, these invitations, and really gives you a network of alumni to fall back on. So Veronica has a lot of connections with um, employments that alums come through to tell her about. We also have conversations with our board of directors and other alums that sometimes just pass word along. And so it's just a great idea to keep connected because you'll remain within that network. And the group of alums that you're joining are successful alums that are great, they get involved, they come back. And I know that they're proud to call themselves RW Law alumni, and I know that you'll be no exception. So I just wanted to say congratulations again, and you can always reach out to me at any time if you have questions regarding anything. Thank you. So uh, as, as was mentioned, I'll be the one who's reading your name on the stage uh, as you come and get your diploma. So if you have any reason to think I might mess that up, please, um, I'll be hanging out here for a while. But if you can't come right now, I'm going to keep a tape recorder down. It's not a tape anymore. A digital recorder down in my office for the next couple of weeks. So if anybody wants to come by and make sure I know how to say, you know, Mary Smith, I'm happy to, I'm happy to see you. And then uh, Sandra is going to do uh, a demonstration of the regalia for us. Oh, she has a show. I'm used to the model. Yeah, I have a show. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to congratulate all of you. Also, thank all of you. Um, it really makes my job a lot nicer when I deal with students like you, and I, I like to thank you for that. Um, and um, I kind of have a, a funny feeling about you guys, maybe because I, you know, I've made a lot of friends. Um, but at the same token, I'm glad that you are going to finally go out and do what you've been wanting to do. So congratulations. Um, these gowns, um, we're going to give you until the 28th to let me know if something's ripped, if something doesn't fit right, whatever. The length should be anywhere below your ankle to your. Um, uh, below your knee to your ankle. But if you're not happy with it, you got that time frame to come and talk to me about it. Um, so the 20th would be it, because I need some time to be able to you know, reorder and get them in here and get them back to you. Um, they come out, when they come out of the bag, they're wrinkled, usually. Uh, we do not like you to iron them. They cannot be ironed, but they can be steam cleaned, or you can even hang them in your bathroom when you're taking a shower. Sometimes that'll help, um, and that's about it. So we're going to show you how to put them on, although Marge is going to help that day, right Marge? Yeah, so yeah. We'll be there and we'll do your hoods for you too. Yeah, so. Okay. 
Hey, Marjorie, I think I've got a short one this oh, time. Oh, good, that's good. <laughs> well, not really short. <laughs> Nothing okay. short for me. Okay. And then you take, you take the hood, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to find this little thing. And once you find that, you know this is the front. Now, what happens with this is if you don't have anything to take the tension off, you end up choking yourself all day. I mean, all day long, you're like pulling on it. Uh, and it, is, it does get heavy, believe me. So what we're trying to do is we try to get the tension off you. So a good way of doing that is when you put it on, right around the zipper, so it doesn't get interfered with the zipper, um, you can put a little a safety pin. So we'll hold do this it. for you. On on commencement day, we will pin them to make sure that it's not choking you. Yeah. We'll all check them to make sure that even after we pin it, it's not choking you. And it should sit so that you, you really, it shouldn't be up here. It no. should be down here. It should somewhere. be down there. Okay. Like but we'll, we'll take care of all that for you. Yeah. No worries. The only thing you have to worry about is your and hair. And so that everyone will know the purple is the degree of law. Oh, it so, that, so that's why it's purple. And the school colors. Um, a lot of people will say to me, oh, well, I don't really like purple. Well, just, you know, you should, you should have become something else. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but, you know. Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as the um, cap tams go, they're very easy. Um, there's a little seam in the back. So all you do is put the seam towards the back. Now, we don't want to see it like this. We don't want to see it like this. We don't want anybody throwing them up in the air. You have to realize that this is not undergrad, not that undergrad bad, but <laughs> I'm not the real sure thing. That. I don't want 4,000 students coming at me at the bookstore, but you know, this is, this is um, you know, uh, a law degree, and let's be a little bit professional right from the start. So, you know, we're not going to have anything written on it or, you know, bells hanging off it or anything like that. Um, and that's about it. And we'll have bobby pins yeah, for you. Yeah, there's bobby pins. Sometimes here. you have to use bobby pins to keep them on your head. We'll take care of you. We've yeah. got you back. Is there morning, any questions? So. Okay. The day of commencement, um, the bookstore is open. I like to let parents know that because some parents, you know, uh, would like to come in. So we're usually open from like 10 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. Um, if you guys need anything, any questions, you come to the bookstore. I try to keep myself... After doing it for 13 years, I got myself pretty into all the uh, questions and answers. I know how to you know, help you guys, so if you need to, you know you, know you can come. Um, thank you, and congratulations again. Thank you.